Look how cute and precious. Look how cute and precious. Oh my god. No, Perry, no. Get away. This is gonna take forever. Hey guys, I'm Zane Ray, and this is me talking about my album, This Is Me. For those of you who are new and don't know me, a quick little bio about me is I'm 23, I live in California, um, I play piano, violin, and cello. Also I want to do a quick apology for my lack of professionalism. I don't have a good camera and I don't have a microphone. I am broke. So you guys are going to have to deal with it. Deal with it. Don't ask me why I own these, but I do plan to get new stuff. So what I'm going to be talking about in this video is I'm going to be giving you the details and the inspirations behind each one of my songs. Uh, 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 and then I'm going to be answering some questions at the end. And this is Perry. So without further ado, let's get started. Track number one, This Is Me. And I started writing this back in 2016 when I got hired at a job. It's kind of a, a random thing that happened, but during the interview, the manager was going over, you know, the basic um, guidelines of it and, and um, how they don't discri discrim discrim discriminate, discrimi discriminate, yeah. and how they don't discrim discriminate. Um, and so, one of the examples she gave was, if there's a lesbian couple, to not bother them or say anything rude or anything, because we don't discriminate here. And I remember thinking, like, just this this moment of strength and courage came over me, and I just said, well, that's good, because I'm gay. And I don't even know why I said that, I was just feeling brave and comfortable I guess around her but she just turned to me and smiled and she just said we're gonna be best friends and after the interview I remember going in my car and just feeling like this big weight had been lifted off of me because I'd never told any strangers that before after I was hired there I started telling more and more people my co-workers and as I got more comfortable with them and it was just like every time I told someone this weight had been lifted off each time it was just such a relief and this song is important to me because it's about me and my viewpoints on things and how I came to term to accept myself because it took me a long time I was raised around a family and religious household, but they don't accept homosexuality. Sorry, Whew, getting a little bit emotional. Um, this song is about acceptance and strength and, you know, specifically for the LGBT community. And yet, there's a part of your life where you have to ask yourself the big questions like, who am I and what do I want to do with my life? What do I want to be? But the song is a reminder to never conform to society, never let them push you around, you know, just try to live your best life. Be true to yourself and the right people will fall in line with you. This song took me the longest to write. It wasn't until about a couple months before I had released the album. It was finally done after like two years in the making. There's so much that society will tell you that is or isn't right and you really have to just 
you know, find your own pathway through it. You know, stay true to yourself and stay honest with yourself. Okay? Remember that. But I'm standing tall and proud. This is me. Track number two is called Friends. And this one is such a fun song. Um, a lot of the inspiration behind it was actually from Friends, the TV show, and part and the other part was like act my actual friends in real life that I started making while I was on the, my my job. And you know, I just picture these friends, these people in my life that, and I. And I never really had that many friends growing up because I was really, really shy. And also, they were the only ones I could have were kind of like from my church. It's about friends that no matter how much time has passed or how much distance you have between you, like you, you guys are always stay the same and nothing has changed. Like that's the type of friends that I long to have and I think I do have now. It took me a while. And, you know, friends that accept you for all of who you are and, you know, friends that are loyal, friends that are there for you. In fact, there is a, there's a line in my song that, say, that says, I'll be there for you. And that's directly from the theme song. And I was hoping I wouldn't get copyrighted or anything because it sounds kind of similar to it. But it wasn't enough to where I did, so I'm good. So, yeah. But it's just such a fun song to me, like, I start to do the Macarena, my hips get possessed by Shakira. Check out the hotties with our dark sunglasses, thinking that we're slick, take way too many pics. Track number three is called Running, and this was actually the first song I had wrote coming into this album. So I made a demo for this like two years ago when I had write, when I had started writing it and I had listened to it like a few weeks ago actually. My ears started bleeding I was like so the demo is bad lol but at least I improved. Um, this was also like two songs in particular inspired this. One of them is Katy Perry's Teenage Dream and the other is Taylor Swift's Style and both of those songs are very like they're just so catchy and well written and a not so secret secret about me is that i'm obsessed with Katy perry like a lot a lot this song is about um being scared and afraid of hurting again so you just keep running away from all your problems and relationships and you know that's not gonna solve your problems i had to learn that still learning it and it's you know it's wanting someone who's worthy of your love not just a pretty face but someone who actually loves you for you you know so that's what this song is self is that so selfish running away from what my heart's needing running on away of all my Track number four is Heat, and this one is sexy. You know, it's just about things that are hot. And I started writing this after I had slept over someone's house for the first time, like slept with them. And it was just such a weird feeling, like feeling someone's body heat. It was, it was very like interesting feeling for sure. It was like you could feel their embrace and their warmth, but at the same time for very long it's kind of like, get your sweaty arm off me please. I hope this song is played in the background while babies are being made.
Track number five, A Love Song for Nerds. This one, it was so much fun to make. It was originally called Duo or Dynamic Duo or something. And I changed it a lot. It was just so fun to come up with like puns and like characters and all these things and sounds that make me just feel happy. It was just, it was just a fun song to make. This was inspired from a few things. My love of video games, for one. Um, you know, TV shows, movies. Um, and also Daft Punk. I was listening to a couple of their songs. I'd never heard them before either. Um, and I was like, you know, they have a really cool, cool vibe to them. I love them. But anyways, this song, this song is just about being in love with another weirdo like you, being in love with another nerd like you, who obsesses over the same things as you and loves you for it. It is a blessing for someone to understand the level of weird and crazy that is you. Track number six is Nostalgia. This is an instrumental song, but it didn't, it wasn't originally, it did have lyrics to it. It was called Once Upon a Time, and it was inspired from just looking through all my old photos as a kid and looking through all my old school books and um, artwork and everything, and just realizing like how much, how much life has changed since then and how much simpler things were, you know, and how you have changed so much since that child to now as an adult. Because sometimes this adult life gets so crazy and hectic that we don't have time for anything. But we need to have time for ourselves to just reflect on life and reflect on what we've done and what our accomplishments are. This was also inspired from watching um, a few Studio Ghibli films, which I love, um, and just the vibe of them and the, the instruments and like feel to them that they use. I wanted to kind of hint at that as well. Also, a little fun fact: in the visualizer for the for the song, there's a little like VHS cam looking thing, and at the bottom is my birth time and date of it. Track number seven, Fame. This is a song that I wrote more, it is about my feelings toward fame, but it is actually mostly, I wanted to writ, write it in the perspective of an actual famous person and how I imagine they feel. They had to work hard to get all the way up there. Just please let them live their life as peaceful as possible with their hectic schedules. People don't understand how busy and crazy it is when you're famous. No matter how much money or how many awards you have or whatever, we are all human. People make mistakes. People say things they shouldn't. People do things they shouldn't. It's not an excuse to, to live by that rule that everybody does it but we all do and we all fault we can try to best ourselves at it so anyways side note and question what does someone like you by adele katy perry's the one that got away one republic's secrets what do those songs all have in common they all have the same chord progression so i wanted to do that 
with the song as well. And I don't know, I, I kind of always like that progression, even though I've heard it so many times. So many artists, not just the ones I named, use the same progression. Also, my friend Tyler was on this track. She's in the background, in the bridge, um, doing harmonies with me. And I just wanted to throw that out there because she has an amazing voice. She's an amazing friend. And if you're watching this, I love you. I don't want fame. I don't want you to be following me wherever I go. Paparazzi all around me. So track eight is Cyber Minds. So originally, this track. I didn't want to rap because I'm not the best at it. But the important thing that I wanted to do with this song was get the message out. And the message is this. Do not send anonymous or non-anonymous tweets or comments or anything hurtful toward another person. Cyberbullying is not okay. It exists and it's very serious. So many people, but more specifically on Twitter, are so quick to hate on somebody because it's trending. And... Excuse me, um... Is that okay to do? Because everyone else is doing it? If somebody makes a meme or a statement that was taken out of context or something, I don't know. There's really no evidence usually behind these things and they just retweet it and retweet it and retweet it with all these captions and it becomes viral and then suddenly this person is hated for literally doing nothing or for doing something so little that it just blows up for no reason. Bottom line is social media is, is a tool. It's more like a baseball bat though. It, can, it was designed for fun, but it can be used to beat someone the heck up. I'm not saying everyone isn't a good person, like there is bad people out there, but still not an excuse to tell people to go kill themselves or to send these threats or these messages that are just so hurtful. Everyone has opinions. Some of them are wrong, obviously but they are opinions it's what someone thinks doesn't mean they're right doesn't mean they're wrong and that's the t Track number nine, Into the Deep. This song is probably one of my favorite instrumentals that I've written. It's, it, has, it has such a hypnotic vibe to it, I think. And it's inspired from a few different things. One of my friends got me into ASMR. And then the other one is just the vastness and beauty of the ocean. I love the water. I love the sea so much. And I think partially is because I was born in this dry ass desert where all I see are tumbleweeds pass by all the time. So like if I see a drop of water, I'm like, what is that? It's so wet. And you get this feeling of the wet. Wet. But anyways, I'm getting off track here. It's such a beautiful song, I think, and it's very soothing and relaxing. I had this idea of writing lyrics for it, but I really, it didn't last long because I started just falling in love with the instrumental. I didn't want lyrics to distract from the song either. So yeah, that's what kind of inspired me. It was just 
the ocean. I think it's just so beautiful and so vast and so mysterious. It's a beautiful thing that we have in this world. And obviously the biggest thing that we have in this world, because it's like, what, 70% ocean and 30% land, could be wrong. And it's nowhere near close being fully discovered. So there still could be mermaids. is show me it's about wanting someone to love period like you want someone so badly and you want to marry someone so badly and you just want that connection with someone so badly and you're longing for it and you see the couple sitting next to you and you're the third wheel like always but you're still hoping and praying that someone will find you someday. Originally it was over like six inches long. <laughs> six minutes long. God, this is why I'm single. This is why I'm still single. Ain't nobody got time to listen to six minutes of somebody singing about wanting someone so badly. That just is too desperate, okay? This also used to be a ballad. It was originally just piano, and it was slowed down quite a bit. And then I decided to speed it up as I was playing around one day and kept it that way. But yeah. What is life being Can you show me? Can you show me? Will you show me? Track number 11, I'll just do this. So this song's called Journey, and this is probably, if I had to pick one song off my album, it's this is probably my favorite one because of the way it makes me feel and the instruments and sounds and everything in it. So I have a confession to make. I love Asian culture. I love Asian instruments. I just think it's so, so beautiful and intricate and delicate and just... And a big inspiration for this song is my love of Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra and their composer, Jeremy Zuckerman, who is an amazing, beautiful songwriter, composer. Real quick. You don't understand how obsessed I am with this series. I have a life-size Katara head in my room that I sculpted to prove my worth. But this song is about... It's about life and learning to let go of things, learning to hold on to things. It's all a balance. I started writing this back when I started thinking about my life and what I've done with it since I think I like graduated high school. I, I wasn't really too happy with my job choices. I wasn't where I wanted to be or where I thought I would be. I felt like my life was just stuck in this loop all the time. And it wasn't doing me any good to stay there. I wanted to remind myself and to others that nothing lasts forever. The good doesn't last forever, and neither does the bad. It's always going to come back around. It's always a cycle. And every day you have a new chance at starting over take the good with the bad take the bad with the good you know just as it comes track number 12 
Wandering in the Woods. I had wrote the melody that, not the flute part just yet, but the part in the background that's kind of looped. I had wrote that a long time ago and I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, but I just liked it. I wanted to keep it around. Um, and then I started, I was just playing Legend of Zelda one day and I was just playing songs with the flute sound on my keyboard, playing Zelda songs. And then I somehow got the idea of wanting to make my own Zelda song. And then I thought of that song that I had wrote a while back that kind of reminded me of it. Kind of reminded me of like this video game soundtrack. So I started putting them together and what I was going for is kind of a video game inspired soundtrack, but also not. <laughs> it was kind of, I just wanted to be peaceful and relaxing. And if I, I kind of wanted, I wanted to do when I started adding like sound effects to it and wind noises and all this stuff, I put my headphones in and I wanted it to like be in and out of both ears, it's called panning. And so I made sure I did that to where it kind of sounded like you were walking on this path. This is what I picture in my head. You're walking on this path in the forest or in the woods and you're kind of just wandering around lost but also like wanting to be lost. And then as the road ends and you see this light at the end, you hear this beautiful angelic voice, which is not mine, by the way, it's my friend Tyler's. Love you. But I am in, my voice is actually in the track as well in the background. But anyways, I found this peace and angel that's singing to you and letting you know that you're okay and letting you know that you're here for a reason. That's what I think of when I hear this song. Track 13 and the last track on the album is called To Love You and this song I wrote when I was 14, um, but it wasn't, it didn't have any lyrics to it. It was just the piano and a violin. And it was originally called Precious One as well. Um, so it, funny story, I tried, when I was writing this song, I actually was trying to learn a different song, but I couldn't get it, so I made my own. <laughs> I was trying to learn to play Not Like the Movies by Katy Perry. And it was kind of like when I was just teaching myself how to play piano. So I couldn't really get the version she had, so I kind of made my own. So yeah, there's that story. I think about this song more as a story about a boy and a girl who are either in the LGBT community and trying to figure out their identity, or they're just suffering from abuse or problems at home or just something affecting their life in a major way. And they're being beaten and hit and abused and they're just trying to find someone who loves them for all of who they are and loves them and accepts them and just trying to love themselves without the outside world constantly telling them now and bringing them down. I believe in soulmates and I believe that there is someone out there who will love you for all of who you are and know you for all of who you are. And whether it be you're looking for a relationship with a mother or father-like figure or a relationship with like a romantic partner there is someone out there who loves you so the, the the moral of the story is to love yourself and to love others 
So that's the end of my album. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the snippets of it that you heard. Please go listen to it. It's on Spotify and iTunes. I'm going to be answering a few questions that I've received. Um, one of them is, did I do everything myself? Basically, yes. The part that I didn't do is actually record my vocals. Um, myself. I did that in a studio. But I wrote all and produced all of the tracks. Um, and then the only thing that was affected from someone else was my voice. They, you know, added effects or changed and like lowered volumes and stuff like that. But all the lyrics are mine, and all the production is mine. A lot of the songs I started were on piano. Um, and then sometimes I even started them on sheet music. And then I would send the sheet music over to a program that the studio used. To, and then I would tell them what instruments I would want the music to be. But yes, the production and the music is all me, and the lyrics are all me. Um, yeah. Second question I got, and it actually is a great question. Which one did I enjoy writing the most? I enjoyed writing all of them, but I think... Oh, uh, that's tough. I think probably a love song for nerds was probably the most, like, fun. Because it, like... I don't know, I got to be nerdy with it. And I love being nerdy. I love being nerdy. And yeah. So the last question is, what's next? So, what's next? Um, I am going to be putting out some new singles. Don't know when, but soon. And keep putting out music, keep putting out my art. I don't plan to stop. Um, this is what I love to do. This is my passion in life. And, you know, hopefully one day I'll just be known or iconic, as the kids say. But yeah, that's, that's what my plans are right now. Just to keep doing what I'm doing. So, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Um, comment down below. And subscribe. And follow me on all my social media for all the latest updates. Um, it's at Zane Ray Music, the, and the links are down below. Let me know what your favorite song was, um, if you heard the album, and or just any question that's in your head right now. Ask it. Thanks again for listening and watching, and and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>